Well, hello, friends. It is TechSags Rewind presented by Yeti. I am David Nuno, Eric Casares, cross-country expert slash awesome athlete at Texas A&M and also track and field with us here for his final show of 2023. Eric, what was your favorite part of the show? Favorite part of the show? <sighs> I don't know. Did you pay attention to the show? <laughs> I did, but I actually do not have a favorite part of the show today. Okay. Well, um, how about Kyle Peterson from ESPN? He was phenomenal. He was great. He went to Stanford. There's a connection there. How about that? How about Kendall Rogers? Kendall Rogers. I mean, uh, I like his analysis. Oh, I mean, okay. Yeah. That's the only one you could remember, right? You forgot the entire rundown, didn't you? It's okay. Tell the truth. <laughs> Maybe. Mike Farron, MLB Network, college baseball uh, expert there on Sirius XM. He was on the program during the 8 o'clock hour. He was great. We did Recruiting Country with Jason Howell. And we also did a little Texas versus Texas A&M or Texas versus OU. What is the bigger robbery? OB thinks it's Texas versus OU. I don't agree. I think it's all a matter of who's winning, who's relevant at the time. And Texas and OU the last 10 years have had a little bit more history. So, yeah, that's their reason. You can hear me kind of explain it. You can hear OBs, all that and more on the Texas Rewind. If it comes down to an eight-game schedule, I suspect that uh, you know we haven't heard anything from Texas other than you know people that are close to them say that Texas wants to play a nine-game schedule, but they don't have a vote. Now, eventually, even if they go to eight, eventually they're going to go to nine. I, it, I just don't think it's avoidable. Right. But um, anyway, I, I thought it was a great soundbite, and I, I and I tell you what, I love the sentiment behind it. You know, uh, but. It, but look, who would you rather play in an eight game? If you're Texas A&M, in it, if it's an eight game model, would you rather play as your permanent rival, Texas or LSU? Texas. Would you? Okay. I personally would rather play LSU, and it has nothing to do with my son going there. I just enjoy the the uh, trip over there more than Austin. You can go to Austin anytime, and quite frankly. The whole SEC experience, I believe, has been so, uh, for lack of a better word, just so enjoyable so, that I, I, I prefer them maintaining the rivalries with, uh, you know, with the, the, new, the new rivals from the, uh, from the SEC. Yeah, my, my whole thing, OB, is that while I believe in the Texas A&M and LSU rivalry, I still do think it's somewhat manufactured and recent, right? Like, sure. And, and sure, it's been fun. And to me, rivalries are a couple different ways to look at them. There's your historic rivalries that no matter what, through the test of time, matter. And there's like the short-term divisional, and maybe short-term is not the right word, but like right now I think there's a rivalry with Ole Miss, right? They're not your rival, but there's a rivalry with them because of the head coach's situation. Mm -hmm. Um, LSU is one because of scheduling, it's become a bigger deal. And because uh, they did share a history of playing against each other for a long time. So to me, Texas is the bigger rivalry. Let's, uh, let's start things off, at least here locally with A&M. What do you think about their run there in Hoover? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was pretty impressive. I mean, right, it, it's the, the hallmark of a Jim Slotsnagel team to finish strong, right? And, and to see them you know, do what they did in Hoover to get this opportunity to – um, you know, really be playing well going into the postseason, I think is, um, you know, it's almost what you expect out of a, a Sloss team. So, I mean, I know you saw it last year with them and then run to Omaha. Um, this is a, a really good offensive team. They always have a good offensive squad. And so I think playing well down the stretch certainly should give them some confidence going into what should be a really interesting regional at Stanford. Yeah, I, I want to know what your thoughts are about not we know SEC teams are really good. I mean that's obvious. You see how many yeah. host sites. But does it prepare you for a regional, or does it beat you down for a regional if you're not one of those elite host sites? There's only two that aren't. Yeah, I mean I, I think it's a I think it's an interesting question because I, I feel like you know I in a previous life I worked in Chicago and we used to have that same argument about the Big Ten and basketball. Right? Is it good to prepare you for the tournament or does it beat you down to have to play those physical games? twice a week and I think probably the answer is unless you were Michigan State it probably beat you down I think in this case it prepares you because you're in baseball getting to face the highest level of competition more regularly should prepare you to face you know the best when the best comes about and and listen like Stanford is really good I, I mean I live in Phoenix and so I see a lot of Pac-12 and I think this is an excellent team and they are absolutely a no doubt top eight team to me. 
but they're not unbeatable. And I think they would be a team that would probably finish in the top five or so in the SEC. Um, they have pitching questions, just like a lot of people do. Um, you know, Quinn Matthews has been terrific for them on Fridays, and they have a couple of really good left-handers in the bullpen, which could pose problems for the Aggies. But I think that preparation of playing an SEC schedule can't do anything but help you because you you've already faced a high level of competition. You're gonna you're gonna start to see some things happen on the recruiting front as far as commitments and and adding a few pieces here and there um but um yeah after that you've got you've got the july pool party uh in late june uh, to keep an eye on and um you know as far as benchmarks when it comes to recruits uh, and commitments i would say if you can get to about 12 commitments before the start of the season i'd, I'd be happy so you want to double up your number a little bit uh, you'd have some pretty positive momentum and you'd be in a pretty good spot with, uh, with a lot of, um, you know, a lot of top guys, you'd be positioned well um, going into the fall and we'll see what happens. Is that possible? You think, I mean, do you feel like 12 is a number that is not only do you want it, but it's something that they can set their sights on? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a doable thing. Um, when you're bringing in, uh, I forget however many visits over the next four weekends. I mean, you're, you're gonna be, you're gonna be in front of a lot of guys who are planning to make some some summertime decisions. So, um, you know, I, I've got my eye on a few. I, I know people have asked me about the next guy, and I've thrown out Cohen Eccles, who has three official visits, three other official visits lined up for for June. Uh, but, um, you know, there's, a, you know, that's a, that's a guy. I, you know, I've kind of penciled in as my uh, guy. I'm watching for who's next or or what have you, but there's, there's other guys that I could see popping and with Tristan Jernigan and Jordan pride, you see some of that stuff happen in a hurry too. Um, you know, timelines have a, have a way of changing and, and guys find, fi figure out where they want to go and they decide not to waste any more time. So, you know, it's the summer is going to be, has a, has potential to be pretty, pretty wild. And, uh, you know, it's going to be full of action with the, all a, a ton of guys on campus in the 24 class and even more in the 25 and 26 class with these camps coming up. I, I know that on the uh, selection show, you had a position against using RPI for um, the selections. Can you kind of color that a little bit for our audience? Let us know your thoughts on the whole RPI yeah. and how it kind of affects the way Selection Monday goes. Yeah, I think my biggest issue is, is everybody agrees that the RPI is a flawed system, but then ultimately when we get to the selection show, that ends up being what they lean on the most. And, and that just, like, in anything in life, it doesn't make any sense. Like, we don't think this is a good process, but we're going to, that, that's the process that ultimately is going to be our crutch as far as selections. And when that's the case, it's time to change the process. In its simplest form, uh, I mean, I, go look at Indiana State. Go look at, at their, and this is, it's going to feel like I'm piling on the Indiana State, and I'm not. It's just the best example of, of kind of RPI manipulation to where they understood the way the system works and said that's the way we're going to schedule, and that's why they're hosting. Indiana State was 2-9 and nine against the RPI Top 50. They beat Vandy at Vandy and hammered them. They beat Indiana. Aside from that, they got swept by Northeastern. They got swept by Kentucky. They blew through their league, but the league isn't very good. And then you look up at the end of the year, and they've got the ninth or 10th RPI in the country. Um, and the West Coast is always going to be a disadvantage because – they all play each other, and opponents' opponents' winning percentage is a component of what the RPI is. And if everybody's playing each other, ultimately it all regresses back to the norm. It, it's the aggregate is everybody is 500, and so that's what clips the West Coast. We just need to figure out something that a doesn't put so much emphasis on an individual game. For instance, if uh, if Indiana State would have lost that game to Vanderbilt instead of a nine or ten RPI, it would have been like 18 or 19. One game shouldn't affect that much. It just shouldn't. So I, I don't have the solution, but I know there's a better system, and we got to figure it out. All right, Eric, tell the people what to do. Be passionate and hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, turn the notification bell on, so then when David does these rewinds, you can see it every single day. Be passionate. What, what was your thinking there? Well, because I, I was just thinking about how passionate you were talking about OU versus Texas, OU versus you know OU A and M, Texas, all that. Just the 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 triangle uh, effect there between those three teams, and when they hit the SEC, a lot of fans are going to be passionate. So, 
Just had to throw that in there. That's Eric Gassars. We'll see him in 2024. This is going to do it for Tech Rewind. See you manana.